Are you tired of not knowing how to start your career in Web3? Are you fed up with everyone's success and you are still missing out? With the Hashlips all-in-one solution, you will know how to make NFTs and even metaverses. This will cost you zero, nada, absolutely zilch. Come learn with us and better your future. Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Daniel aka Hashlips and welcome back to my channel. I do hope you enjoyed my little parody intro over there, but it is so true. For a lot of individuals, the Web3 space is quite new, but there are literally thousands of opportunities that you can take part in. And it's not always development. However, in this channel, if you want to learn more about development, I highly recommend going and subscribing to my YouTube channel because I show you how to do all sorts of things like creating NFTs, learning more about the technology, and in this specific series, we are building out a basic metaverse. And if you follow along, this is what you'll end up with for the very first part. The parts following this will expand the metaverse and show you exactly what's needed to make it a bit more decentral. When I started the series, building a metaverse with React 3 Fiber, I didn't take into consideration that individuals most probably want to see what we are building. So we are halfway through the series and I thought I would make this video as a progress shot so that I can attach it to the beginning of this series so that people know what we are building. Also in this video, I'm not only going to show you what you can do by looking at these videos, but we'll also take a look at the bigger picture, the architecture of a metaverse. For the first half of this tutorial series, you will get to learn how to use 3D objects in the browser and build out this world, placing trees, having a character, and understanding how to use React 3 Fiber and 3JS to build things in a 3D space right in your browser. The concepts that you will learn in my tutorial series is more than just the metaverse. You can take these 3D skills and apply it to any website. Maybe you want to build a personal website, and you can do that too. But if you are interested in seeing the architecture, how to build up metaverses, how to work with smart contracts, this will be all explained in this series. Before starting this series, I would like to give you a task. If you do find my content helpful, please feel free to give me a like and comment below. I really highly appreciate that and it helps my channel out tremendously. So let's go ahead and now look at the architecture part of the entire metaverse. So here's the basic metaverse architecture. Now, when someone sees a metaverse, they don't realize the technologies behind it all. And that is why I'm going to show you the architecture. And this is also a great help for developers. You see, when a lot of developers work on the same project, it is important to understand the underlying architecture of the entire product. This helps the developer to know what technologies they can work on at a given time, where it fits in, and how it communicates with the rest of the technologies around it. Think of this as the overall blueprint of what we are building. And we are going to indicate now how all these applications and technologies link up, communicate, and flow. What you'll see me build out in the beginning of this series is the Metaverse client. Now, this is purely a representation, a depiction in 3D of data and this is why we need to know how to use 3D objects in the browser. And this is only one part of the bigger picture. It's important to note that each and every application's architecture looks different. For example, this is Eden Nance's architecture, the open source metaverse that we are building. And it's fitting because I want to use this as a teaching method to show people how to build a metaverse in our version. But as I said, you get many different flavors and depending on the devs, they will set this architecture up differently. Now let's take a deeper look at the technologies. We will start off with these five applications. Notice how each one is separate and that is for a very good reason. We will start off with the landing page and this is an example of a landing page of a product. It is simply a page where 
people can go to to find links and information about the project as well as some links to different applications. In essence, the landing page is simply a place for new individuals or existing members to go to to link to different applications such as the Studio, Metaverse or Map. Let's indicate this by connecting the landing page to the Studio, the Metaverse as well as the Map. It will not go directly to the Builder because you will need to go to the Studio to go to the Builder. So we'll link the Studio to the Builder as well. Before we move on from the landing page, I just want to show you that a landing page is purely a static site, usually making use of Next.js or React directly with some styling. The other applications over here uses MetaMask as a provider, Next.js, Stalewind, as well as React 3 Fiber. These applications are not static sites and will actually communicate with the SDK as well as the blockchain from time to time. But we'll indicate that later. For now, just understand that these are not static sites, but actual applications. Okay, so to move on, what I would like to show you is an example of a studio. And this is how the Eden Dance Studio looks like. Keep in mind that everything you're about to see regarding Eden Dance is still in heavy development. However, a studio application gives the user the chance to manage his or her tokens and actually goes ahead and can change certain parameters, as well as connect with the blockchain, sync data, and go to the builder, as we have indicated in the architecture. So the builder would look something like this, where users get to build stuff, move things around, and build out their little space in the metaverse. As for the metaverse client, like I said, this is purely a way to display the data the data that's being manipulated by the studio and the builder. Therefore, this is an example of the metaverse that we will build. We have a character, the character is walking around, and eventually we'll see some buildings from people building in their spaces. And then we get the map application. Now, the Edenlands project hasn't really built out the map yet, but imagine a map as a top-down view of the entire world. Users get to explore around, see how it's placed, and maybe teleport to certain areas in the map. You might want to ask me, why am I talking about Edenland so much and using that as an example? Like I said before, Edenlands is completely open source and being built. If we are done with Edenlands, I will open it up to the world for you to use. So, look forward to using each of these technologies absolutely for free. And if you want to know the progress, go ahead and follow me on Twitter or follow the Eden Nance project directly. However, it is still in development and slowly but surely we will build each and every product out and show this to you on YouTube. This is also why this might be the biggest tutorial series ever. Because I'm going to take some time and build out each of these technologies with you in a tutorial, starting with the Metaverse client. The ones we don't really build out will be open source anyway for you to use. So let's carry on with the architecture. So carrying on, we can see that at the very top we have our blockchain. And in our case, this is the Ethereum blockchain. This is where our ERC721 smart contract for the spaces, the plots for our metaverse will live. Each token will be represented in the contract and we now need a way for us to access that contract from one given source. Each token on the contract on the blockchain has its own blueprint and that is a discussion for another day. However, it does have a contract address. So how do we get access to that from a central point? Well, we can set up a software development kit, which will be living on NPM and for developers to pull in and link to their projects. The Software Development Kit, the SDK, serves a bigger purpose than just creating an instance of our contract. This can have central information, things, functions that each and every application needs access to. This is a great way to have an SDK for a project that other developers can make use of as well. That's why we will create an SDK to know what is the smart contract's address 
and to have these applications create an instance of that contract. I know for non-developers this might be a difficult concept to understand, but just know that the SDK serves a source of truth for functions that we need to use in all the other applications, so we don't need to rewrite code. Now, what we can do is we can kind of depict this flow, although the SDK doesn't really uh, have a direct connection with the blockchain, it kind of knows what information we need to use. However, the studio will definitely need to make use of the SDK. The builder will make use of it, as well as the metaverse client at some point, and the map. So you can see how useful it is to have an SDK. Otherwise, we needed to do all this code in each one of these applications. And if something changes, we need to change it in all of them. The nice thing about having a publicly accessible SDK is that any dev can use it by simply using npm install my metaverse name SDK and they will have this package as well on their application. And the nice thing is that an SDK is version controlled. So if you do it right, you can make it backwards compatible. Great, so the SDK is now hooked up. But that doesn't mean that we can just simply read all the tokens and display it in some way. In the studio, we display the tokens a user owns. That we can do a check through the SDK by creating an instance of the blockchain and reading that data from the blockchain. But to make it more efficient and seeing that the data will be stored on IPFS, which is a decentralized storage mechanism, it will be too slow to read. So, whenever we update the token, this will be stored on a cache server. And this is where this separate server comes into play. To understand why, I'll briefly explain that each one of our tokens has a blueprint that has data stored on IPFS. Everyone knows that IPFS is a bit too slow to read it directly. So, when we make an update, such as the name or description or even the build data, this will be stored through a Node.js and Express application, and then this data will be updated on an S3 storage bucket. No need for databases at this point. This is simply files that's being altered in the S3 bucket. This might sound complex, but bear with me. Because we know the tokens the user owns, the studio can make some updates on our server. This is a Node.js and Express server that will then go and update the storage. And these files can then be read by the studio. So there's this nice loop of updating and reading the files. For security and for the server to update a token's data on our case server, we need a signature from the user on the provider. The signature will be provided. We will check the signature and make sure that this user can update the file in the storage. And because we can also update the build data, the builder can also go and update the spaces over here. And this can also be read from the builder, the storage of these tokens. Now this might seem extremely complex, but the studio and the builder essentially can do the same thing. It's just better UI and a better user experience. The applications that will always read from our server is essentially our metaverse client as well as our map. These don't need to update our server at all. This is only left to the studio and the builder itself. These two will simply consume the data. Before you get too confused at this point, just know that this server is needed for speed and it is a bit more central. At this point, this whole application is very centralized because we only use the blockchain as a method of checking if someone owns a token and updates it on our central server. But we don't want that. We want our application to be versatile and fully decentral if needed. And to do this, we give our studio a special ability. The studio itself has the ability to write data directly to our contract on the blockchain. And if we want to ever sync data and update our server, we can read from that contract as well. Now this part might confuse you. 
but in fact, this makes this metaverse very interoperable. If someone else uses the same infrastructure, they can simply write data to the blockchain, go to a different metaverse, and sync the data there to update their instance of the local off-chain server. And the best part of it all is because the data that's stored on each token is JSON data, it can be formatted and governed by schemas in any way, shape or form. This makes it a truly interoperable token that can be used in any way in any metaverse that adopts this technology. So, this is a very loosely constructed, I would say, token, but it has a very powerful capability of being anything. And that is something we have to consider when we develop a metaverse. We need to start thinking about how other people can make use of the same technology in their own way, making it interoperable and make it extend, you know, the use cases of just a single metaverse. Now the last piece of the puzzle that we'll need is something like a real-time server. This server will purely interact with the metaverse itself. And the reason is, we need to know how many people are in this server to display different avatars walking around. Maybe we want to track the daytime or anything that has a real-time effect on our metaverse client. For example, this server can keep track of different players' transforms such as position, rotations, as well as animations that we need to play and display to the current client. And that is it for our metaverse architecture. That's how simple it is. However, there might be small bits and pieces that we've left out which we'll add as we go along. It's important to note that this is also a basic architecture for any decentral application that you want to have centralized at some point. This is pretty cool, so feel free to use this in any of your other applications as well. However, the architecture is now here, and now I hope that you have a better understanding of the technologies needed to create a project like this. It might seem daunting, but remember, Rome wasn't built in one day. So if you take this piece by piece, and bit by bit, you will understand each part and how it works. And that is really, really cool. Because you get to not only use this in a metaverse project, but also in all your other projects. So I'm looking forward to going through this whole process with you. Like I said, this will be a very big series, and I will make other videos in between as well, that's not related to this. However, we will always come back and add to the architecture and explain things on how to build this metaverse. And you can find this all if you go to my playlist and go and watch this build a metaverse with React 3 Fiber. This video will be the first one in this playlist and a great kickoff to a wonderful series. The first few videos will teach you how to build out the metaverse client. I really hope you're going to enjoy this journey with me and as always, if you did, leave me a thumbs up, comment below, and remember to subscribe so you don't miss a moment. And till next time, I'll see you in the next video. Cheers for now.